Hello folks, this is going to be a relatively short video on coding style and conventions. Now, it's important to acknowledge from the very beginning that um, coding style is very personal and we could all code in a different way if we wanted to. But it's a good idea to come up with conventions and coding styles so that we look at one another's code, we understand what means what. And also it guides us as to how we write code. Um, I really like this uh, quote from Hadley Wickham from the Tidyverse style guide. Uh, good coding style is like correct punctuation. You can manage without it, but it sure makes things easier to read. Okay, we're going to look at some specific parts of coding style conventions. And the first thing that we're going to look at is snake case. There are approximately four different conventions for naming variables in your code. And when it comes to R, this also comes down to column names as well. So we're going to talk about naming both variables and column names in the same manner. There's something called camel case, and then there's crouching camel case. There isn't actually any accepted uh, name for this. I call it crouching camel case, and other people call it other things. Dot case is where we use periods, and snake case is where we use underscores. So, why do we recommend using snake case in R in three months? Well, there are two very good reasons. It's the official uh, recommendation of the Tidyverse Star Guide, so it recommends using snake case, and it is also the default setting for the clean name functions from Janitor. So, I pipe this tibble into clean names, uh, my camel case, my crouching camel case, and my dot case column names all become snake case. So you can see that uh, Janitor has detected my camel case and it's putting an, an underscore. It's detected the crouching camel case and the dot case as well. So if you're going to be using clean names to clean your column names, it makes sense to continue this convention in your own column names and also in your variables. Now, it can be very tempting sometimes to use capitalization in your column or in your variable names to convey additional meaning. A good example of this is if you're naming a column ID. It can feel in your head like, oh, it makes more sense if I capitalize ID because that will jump out to me as being ID. But here's a quote for me, which is rubbish, <laughs> I've just made up. Varying standards leads to inconsistent standards. So at the beginning when you're writing your code and you've got your head screwed on well and you've drunk your coffee and it's the start of the day, then you might go, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use capital letters um, here for ID. But then later when you're hitting your deadline, you might forget and your code might not work and you go, okay, why can't I find this ID column? And it turns out it's because at the start of your code, you were using capitals and then you've gone later to not using capitals. So agreeing from the outset to use a lowercase snake case helps you prevent errors. So then we come to code indentation. Now this is a much more subject subjective subject and it's much harder to talk about in um, uh, with bullet points, but we can remove some of this subjectivity through the use of the styler package. So I have the styler package installed on my machine. Uh, so I'll go over to our studio um, and in the console, I'll just install the package to make sure that I get the most up-to-date version of it. Uh, install the packages styler, and it says uh, it needs to um, update loaded packages. That's because I've used it. Uh, so R is going to restart for me, um, and then it's going to go and install that package. Uh, okay. So it's going and installed it. Now it's installed it. Okay. So when we install that package, it installs an add-in. You might not have seen add-ins yet in R Studio. So here in the top of R Studio, we can see add-ins. And if I click on here, we can see what I've already searched for Styler. We can see all of the different add-ins that I have installed. Now Styler is the one that we want to look at. So let's filter again for Styler. Um, and this allows us to uh, set the style for our selected code. So I'm going to go and get this script file here. And this script file, I have deliberately written this in a weird way. Uh, so what do I mean by a weird way? So let's look at line four. On line four, we're creating a variable my data, and we've got a, we've got pipes, multiple pipes on the same line. That's an unusual convention. Um, 
And also, uh, something else here is that I've got spaces between my function name and my bracket. So this won't cause errors, but it is an unusual convention uh, to, to follow. Uh, also, I've replicated this here. So I've got no space uh, before my pipe, and I also have the function I'm piping into on the same line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this code into a new script file. There we go. And I'm gonna select it all. And now let's go to add-ins and we'll go to style selection. And in the console, you can see it's, uh, it says using style transformers, tidyverse style. So this is now formatted in the tidyverse style. And you can see that the code looks much more familiar to code you'll have seen in R in three months and the code you've been writing. So we can see each function on a different line here. Uh, we can see actually that the mutate here has been broken into more lines and this in general makes it more readable as well. Sometimes uh, Styler doesn't exactly see everything. So you can see here on line 25, uh, mutate hasn't been put in a new line. So we can go and do that. Um, and this is a good lesson that, that not everything is perfect if you try and automate it. Uh, so sometimes you have to follow these conventions yourself. So let me go back to uh, my slides. Need to go and nip them. Okay. So we've just talked um, about uh, code indentation. And now I want to talk about, uh, can I get advice on naming variables and data? And this is something that people often ask me uh, when they're learning R for the first time. How do I name my variables? How do I name my function? And this is quite a famous uh, quote from Phil Carton. There are only two hard things in computer science, cache and validation, which is very, very hard, and naming things. Naming things is an unsolved problem. We, we have to decide ourselves, how do, we, how do we name our functions and how do we name our data? I do like this advice from the Tidyverse style guide. So generally, variable names should be nouns and function names should be verbs. I think that's a really nice rule to try and follow. So data is nouns and functions, they're verbs because they do things. And the Tidyverse style guide also tries to say, strive for names that are concise and meaningful. But it does note this is not easy. If you go and read the Tidyverse style guide, then it gives some advice, uh, well, it gives some examples of what to do. So if we specifically look at thinking about naming data, then there's some other good advice from the Tidyverse style guide. And that's if you're trying to create variables for each year, for instance, patients 2018 all the way through to patients 2020, consider instead storing this data as a list or as a data frame. That can actually help you identify where you don't have fully tidy or fully long data sets yet. If you're storing, a variable in, uh, if you're storing a variable of your data in the variable name, then that's not fully long, okay? So that, that that's um, some advice, but sometimes you do find yourself having a data set which is about 2020 and another data set which is about 2019 because those are very, very different years for lots of different reasons. Okay, uh, so then when it comes to advice and naming functions, there is some good advice that's buried here um, in the Tidyverse principles, but it's, uh, it's worthwhile mentioning that these are ultimately designed for folks contributing to the Tidyverse code base. So if I go along to this website, um, then it gives some good advice here. Uh, so it says, in general, prefer verbs, use imperative mood. Uh, so use mutate and not mutated. Um, so it says here an exception, uh, use noun -y interfaces when you're building a complex object like ggplot2. Uh, so in ggplot2 you have gm point and you have gm line and those are nouns rather than verbs because they are adding things to your chart. And it also gives some advice here, noun should be singular, gm point, not gm points, simply because the pluralization rules in English are complex and they are quite complex. So that's all the advice that I can give you about um, style conventions um, and coding conventions. So try to use snake case and lowercase snake case. 
And when you're naming your variables, um, try to come up with names which are useful for you. Um, if you are encoding year in your variables, then think about maybe joining your data sets together and adding a column that contains year. You might have questions about this video and I'm very happy to receive those. Uh, I'll find a place that we can, oh, we can make a, we can make a thread on the RN3 uh, discussion board. So I'm going to make a thread there and then any specific questions about um, coding conventions, we can ask there. Okay. Thank you, folks.